and we're live in three, two, and welcome everybody to another episode of the Planet Mullins podcast. We're just crushing through season two right now, and I'm very honored and lucky to have an amazing violinist, producer, songwriter, uh, local celebrity, and international celebrity. This is Jesse Green, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. Hi. Thank hey, you. Hey, Jess. For that. How's it going today? Going really good. You know, really good. Going with the flow and trying to just keep it moving. Good vibrations. Yeah. Well, it's uh, it's a great thing to be um, a neighbor of yours in in Venice and. I love how you call our part of Venice the safe area. <laughs> I mean, you know, you got to you got to bring bring the uh, manifestation, right? Make it safe, in right? Your mind. I love it. Well, it, are you a met, metaphysical kind of person? I mean, I I don't usually Did you deduce start, that by my by crazy talking. Well, I think it's kind of interesting because you have. A lot of original songs that have kind of a cool vibe leaning that way that are, um, as my friend Robert says, uh, philosophical. That's like the California version of philosophy. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even say the right one, but it's just neat that you, you know, have such a great vibe. And I, I think people really feel your vibe in the music. But I mean, really, when we met, I didn't really know that you were a musician. I had to find out from other neighbors. And then, when, and I was just out in the back, you know, like um, talking to somebody, and they said, "Well, you know, she's the she's the violinist for for Pink and the Foo Fighters," and you were always just so low key coming out of your gate with your little dog, you know, and just like da da da. Oh, there's Valentine. Hi, <laughs> Valentine was just in the back. Oh um, yeah, yeah. But it's I mean, around. It, it's kind of an amazing story. Like, how do you? How do you go from, you know, whatever your beginnings are to all of a sudden you're on tour with Pink? I mean, that's got to be re insane. Tell me about that. It is really insane. And it's kind of a long story. So I'm going to try to pick pieces. Okay. I've, I've been in this dimension quite a long time. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I think basically what it is, is that um, I really had no idea what I was doing when I was, you know, most of my life. It's always been kind of going with the flow and just trying to find the path of least resistance, I suppose. Okay. Um, I had an incredibly difficult childhood. I don't know any, you know, I mean, I think it's pretty common. And I was, a, I was trained classically from four and I didn't love it. I didn't love it. It was just a nightmare for me. So I quit mm -hmm. when I was in high school and I started okay. playing electric guitar and I wanted, you know, I was a rebel and I went, did a bunch of drugs and hung out with all the wrong people and got in tons of trouble. And then and that's, how I, you, that's how you huh? got the gig because that's the rock world right there. That they said, Hey, let's take that girl. She's already done everything wrong. <laughs> right. Well, thankfully that's, it actually did really serve me well because I was kind of over the, any of the heavy drugs by the time I was 21. Right. And the fact that I survived to 21 was pretty miraculous. And um, when I, you know, as later teens, early 20s, I started to really miss the violin. I actually started playing again when I was like 18. Okay. And I started to really want to get my shit together. And um, I discovered that learning <laughs> was this incredible gateway to to figuring out what I'm doing on this plane, I guess, you know, to like, um, to understand my role in, in this, this world, which really relates to how, what I'm doing with music. It always has, it's like finding the big, the big questions of what we're doing here and mm -hmm. where we, where we flow and what, you know, what music does in helping us figure out our place. And also when we listen to it, it brings us back to these times that we had. And, you know, I mean, it's so important throughout our sure. lives. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. So, yeah. um, so I was really lucky. I, I, there was, I, I did a lot of weird moves. Like I went to Florida when I was 18, I had with my girlfriend and 
we basically, I figured out like you could strip at 16, but you couldn't be a waitress until you're 21. So it was just like, I was like, okay, I need to get an education to like do something <laughs> with my life. And right. so I started going to community college and then I got an offer from another friend to move to California and it was share an apartment. And I had, I was like, cool, I'm going. And in California, I landed in Santa Monica started going to Santa Monica College and I started seeing kids jamming on the lawn and I had never seen that before just violins like jamming along to guitars and you know of course I knew what happened of course so much of music has so many great string parts but it right. didn't click in my head I can use my classical training to do music I love for some reason it was either guitar and vocals or nothing and then I realized wow I can play violin with with bands and it was so nice. awesome so i joined the santa monica orchestra that's the same time i started playing cello too i do love the cello so um so it was just a matter of a uh, weird chain of events that led me to going to ucla because i auditioned for their ethnomusicology department and i got in which was so amazing because wow. i loved loved it cool. i loved all my classes were just there was so many performance classes all it was basically world um world studies ethno, uh, it was basically world studies focusing on music mm -hmm. it was so fun and great and i also met a band chalk circle and we did like Lollapalooza, and we like toured all up at the west coast and it was like an art punk rock band kind of wow but, but not punk i guess it was like more like theatrical rock um and it was really fun we used the art department to do our lights we had crazy light shows and it was really fun and then right after college i was playing music i was jamming on the boardwalk with a girl uh -huh. playing guitar and this guy came up and said would you want to audition for peter Himmel himmelman's band i don't know if you heard of peter himmelman but he's an incredible singer songwriter and I got the gig and it was like buses and he was he was like a singer songwriter, just like really heartfelt, beautiful. Nice. And, and that was a great experience. And then after that, I just was in L.A. playing with different bands and I got into this band called the Geraldine Fibbers, which was cow punk. We were on Virgin <laughs> Records. Cow punk. We, it was during the 90s and we literally got so much money to make these records, which right. even though it was really alternative music. And I really loved the singer Carla Boslett. She's amazing. Um, great bands. Um, of course, the dynamics were challenging. We were all messed up 20 year olds. But um, and we toured around the, the United States in a van eight months out of the year for years for a few years there. Wow, yeah and we played you know small venues but super fun shows and we went to europe and we did some shows in europe and and it was it was really i got to play out of a you know distortion pedal and do really whatever i wanted you know it was like my i created my own sound right and that was just incredibly special for me because i had you know it was really had no no other way of figuring out what where i was gonna fit in this band in this mm -hmm. music you know mm -hmm. so it gave me an opportunity to try all these crazy things and then after the Geraldine Fibbers I moved to Minnesota Minneapolis. Hey, I lived there for a while did you yeah I lived there for about a year I was in a uh, really uh, kind of a cheesy Vegas show kind of thing and I uh, got approached at uh, one of these hotel shows by a a guy that was starting a new rock band and he said you got to join my band you get out of this vegas stuff i got a i got a gig for you you know and so i moved there right at the time that prince was playing at this place called duff's nice. Irish Pub, and he was i think he was 17 or 18 something like that and i didn't last very long in minneapolis and that's you know um, I actually got kicked out of the state, but I don't want to really talk about oh, it. Oh, no. But is, isn't it interesting, though, that during your 20s, um, it's really a time where you can explore things and find yourself and do stuff. And it sounds like you really got a lot of great experiences. So then after, you know, the world tours and all that, you came back and then all of a sudden you're, what, on the boardwalk and pink walks by? No. <laughs> it, it, it gets longer. You ready? You want I'm me ready. To keep going? Okay. I know. So, yeah. No, I loved Minneapolis and I honestly never thought I would come back to Los Angeles. Really. I loved it because 
Los Angeles, I love Los Angeles. It's so beautiful and I love everything about it, but I was never into this whole, this driving obsession with, with having stuff. And I'm a minimum, you know, I found out that I've discovered I'm kind of a minimum minimalist and, yeah. and Minneapolis, like you can live. I had a, my, I had my own band. I released solo records. I loved my band. There were the players in high respects, a killer hip hop band. They were so great. And I waitressed, I like a couple of days a week and that's all. I just did music and loved it. And then I got a call <laughs> and I, uh, part of the reason I moved there is for a guy, of course. <clears throat> and then I got a call and it was from my friend Rami who said, because the foos had come through town, the Foo Fighters had come through town. It was on a Halloween night and it was just a bizarre situation where I wasn't working, which I normally would have been bartending or something but right and they wanted me to show them around minneapolis oh wow so i did i took them around and dave i remember was so impressed because i knew all the bartenders i got everybody free drinks and it was just like he's like you you are the queen of minneapolis i'm like <laughs> i don't really think so but cool and then <laughs> nice. i went to see them play they played um with bob dylan and i was just blown away and we all got along great six months later they had a violin player who I actually knew from Santa Monica College, and she was great. And I thought it was beautiful show. Mm -hmm. Six months later, I get a call and I, I it was my friend Rami. He's like, would you want a tour with the Foo Fighters? And I was like, uh, let me check my schedule. Uh, oh my God. Now, for people that don't know, Rami is the keyboard player in, in that band. He's and a keyboard he's, player, yeah. Yeah, he's quite accomplished. And so... So you get the call and you're thinking I've been friends with Rami for we we met back when I was in the Geraldine Fever. So for a long time, been friends with Rami. And he's an incredible, he's an incredible musician and connector. He's really mm -hmm. knows everybody. He's such a kind person and super great guy. And so I remember being like kind of scared because I was like, I really want to do this, but I know it's not gonna, I'm not gonna be able to make my relationship work. I just had this feeling. And sure enough, I had to make I a don't. choice. And I did. I chose the Foo Fighters. I would. And, I would. And so um, I went on tour. I actually went what? out thinking thinking it was audition. You know, I practiced all the parts and I get there and Dave goes, hey, thanks so much for coming to join the band. I was like, whoa. And it was all new material. And their hit song was on cello. I was to totally Whoa. panicked but thank heavens it's wow. not a hard it wasn't a hard part oh so, wow <laughs> it worked out finally <laughs> that's so and great so getting to where I, the so then i toured with them for a year uh two years seven and eight to 2007 and eight and then um then we were starting to make a new record it was very exciting but david decided to go out with the, them crooked vultures and right around that time Alicia Pink, I had met her, Pink, I had met her when we were on tour doing festivals in Europe in 2008, okay. and she saw me playing with them, and then uh -huh. we would hang out and party after the show, oh, wow. and I loved her band, she had great, I mean, she is just such a talent, and she has such an incredible uh, array of people around her and talented mm -hmm. musicians, so I loved them. And then she called to see if I would tour, and I was, of course, like, what do I ask Dave? I was like, she wants me to tour. And he said, as long as you can leave and come and do what I need you to do, yes. Oh, and I couldn't wow. believe it. They said okay to that contract. Pink. Wow, that's incredible. So, so anyway, so I... then I went out with Pink. That was in 2009. And then she asked me again in 2017. That's incredible. So you're in a unique situation because I, I've seen with some of my friends and even on some of my own tours uh, that I've been on with other people, Boy, they get touchy if you have a contract where they might be somewhere and then all of a sudden you're like, okay, well, I'm going to run off and do two or three dates with so-and-so and I'll be right back. Like that stuff does, doesn't fly. I know. I was so lucky and and it did happen. I had to leave because it was like, it was like great shows like VH1 Storytellers and MTV European Awards. And I did have to leave and I almost lost my job, but thank goodness it worked out. That's incredible. So, I know. oh, there's Valentine walking around behind you sitting there. I, know. <laughs> I, I just love your dog. Your dog is like, I a, love her too. She's the coolest dog in the whole neighborhood. She is so cool. I well, know. Well, are you, um, you know, now that you've done all of this stuff, do you feel like 
there's do you still have any sort of a bucket list as far as the music industry goes it's like you can't really tour with anybody bigger than that my bucket list is more metaphysical okay i mean it's really just you know um i think achieving peace <laughs> in the heart and soul that's my bucket list that's got to be a really um you know challenging thing to do and i just you know a little about me I've always kind of struggled with that kind of stuff because the way that things are set up on the planet Earth just doesn't make any sense to me at all. I'm right there with you. Yeah, yeah. And I was that way from the time I was a little kid. You know, I would lay out lay out on the lawn and look up at the stars and just go, why can't I just run up there for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I can see it. Why can't I touch it? Right. Yeah. And, and um especially with in the you know pandemic times and all the weird um ideological battles and the internet and facebook and instagram and the different ideologies and the conflicts i mean i think it's really hard for people to find level ground yeah and so you know are you how do you do that for for yourself and is it a daily challenge because i think for a lot of artists it's really a daily challenge it's absolutely a daily challenge. Um, I have been, you know, I mean, <clears throat> I think for many years I self-medicated with cannabis, which is ups and downs, you know, has its good and bad. And I do really appreciate the cannabis. Um, I don't do much else. I One thing I really love is yoga. I've really ah. gotten into my yoga and I love doing yoga. And I do it every day. And Sometimes I wake up and I don't want to do it, but there's, it makes me feel so good right. that I usually get it done. And then another great thing is having the dog. She gets me out. She makes me walk. I have to walk every day, you know, mm -hmm. or take a bike ride with her or whatever. And, and there, those things like moving, like wheel spinning on your bike and all those things, it's really hard to stay in a, in a low space when yeah, you're I noticed, actually. I noticed that when that. I got a, a bike, when I moved into this new place. Um, I went and got an, a new bike and just kind of made I that. I think I work. saw you on your bike the other day. I said it was, <clears throat> it was Yay. the day before yesterday. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, you were on uh, Pleasant View, right? I think so. Yeah, you're That's on Pleasant so View funny. and you're on your phone and you were talking to somebody. I was like, hi. But, I think I saw you after you waved. <laughs> yeah, right, well, that's the story of my life with women. So, <laughs> funny. yeah, but but it's just so great to talk to you about this stuff and to know that, um, you know, you're just like right here in, in the hood and, and you've lived in Venice for quite a while now, uh, right? You know, what's funny is I actually lived in Venice for a short period in time back in the early long time ago let's just say that so i've been in and out of this little area for mm -hmm. years and yeah I, there's something very special about venice there yeah. is there's really something there's like a very you know there's like um a, a very good it feels like just there's some you know there are great it draws great people right I have some wonderful friends here and a very artistic base right. you know, i think that you know i mean it's really it is a special special place and the people here are very accepting to people like you and I, um, yeah. I think like, because I've lived in some places, you know, that are more kind of the HOA condo -y thing. I moved in with, you know, a girl or two over the years and eventually it would always be, well, we have to have a meeting with the people from the HOA because they don't like this. They don't like that. They don't yeah. like the other thing. And I'd be like, oh my God, I'm just so not Laguna Hills ish. I'm yeah. so I'm so not Beverly Hills and in Venice I have a lot of artistic friends that live around here I play in a little band and uh, you know I know a lot of people and I just uh, I first came here in 96 and was here for a while and then went elsewhere but it's great you having you on the show today and I, I just wanted before we finish up um, there's a song of yours that I think is really great and it's called if I were me that was with Dave Grohl Wow. That, I know. Did he, I know. did he sing that? He did sing that. That song is unbelievable. And folks, you should check out Jesse Green on Spotify. It's J-E-S-S-Y-G-R-E-E-N-E. -S -S -E -E -E. 
and go listen to her song where she wrote it. Dave Grohl is the lead singer. It's uh, we wrote it together. Oh yeah, I mean it's a co-write. Ooh, yeah, it's pretty dicey. <laughs> well, did you ever? I mean, uh, I don't know. I can, we can go on if you want, but I'm thinking that Spotify channel with your song on there. That's just such a a great tune. I loved it, and today. Yay. Today, Apple had their keynote address for the new iPhone, and I was watching that, and I was just, I was listening to your music and and that, and I was going, there's a lot of cello going on in this uh, Apple presentation, and there's a lot of string parts and violins, and you do recording sessions for people. I do, right? yes, I do. I that's what I've been doing pretty much when I'm not, you know, since the whole pandemic thing, though. The main thing I've been doing is is at home sessions. I have a little studio set up that I love. Nice. And yeah, and even when I mean I travel, when I travel, I take a smaller one, but I still, you know, it's it's I, I feel like even the expensive gear, it doesn't really matter that much if you have a microphone and it, you know, is <laughs> all you really need is a microphone and your audio interface and you're pretty much ready to go. Well, it, when I compare um you know, because I'm a uh, producer and an engineer and part of the Grammys and the Recording Academy, and I make my living with my ears. And when I compare the audio quality of what you're doing to a lot of things that get sent to me during voting season, like right now or at voting season, I'm, it's really pristine. What you're doing is just like super, Thank you. it's super top quality. And awesome. You know, you've got such a great vibe with your music and everything. So, folks, if you need a violinist or a cello player, um you know you can reach out to jesse what's the best way to reach you is it your website or my, my email okay it's, yeah you can do the website or the email is just jesse green at yahoo.com okay and that's j-e-s-s-y g-r-e-e-n-e -E -E, right yeah you got it at yahoo well i can't yes. thank you enough for uh dropping by my show this has really been fun and uh it's so my pleasure robert i love your show Thank you, and uh, you awesome. know, we'll be having some more fun as we go along. So awesome! I'll that's going to wrap up today for uh, the Planet Mullins podcast. My guest was the amazing Jesse Green, and we'll uh, see you on the next one.